thank the organizers, my dear friend Dr. Ashraf Daryl Jodi, and the IMA president, and all the IMA functionaries, and my IP colleagues, and my co panelists, co faculty, Dr. Sengudon and Prasanna. Thanks to everyone. In every CME, the first person who will get learning is the speaker. For this, I have to read and learn many more things. That way, thanks to all of you for giving me this opportunity. Children are the God of the whole society. A child is the heart of the home. The child becomes sick, no whole house will be sick. So everybody will be in agony when the child is sick. At the same time, child will be, even a fever or vomiting in a child will be taken very seriously by the parents and they will approach the hospital. So what I am going to cover is right, into two components. First is introduction followed by case scenarios. And then at the end, I am going to tell the new way of triage, which is provocated by PALS, Pediatric Advanced Life Support Course, now IAP Advanced Life Support Course, based assessment of physiological status, which was a game changer in approaching and managing emergencies. In our Panivana Manakam, salutations to those children who continue to help the recovery of sick kids by sharing their pain and visuals to enrich the medical knowledge. Many visuals and videos I am using it mainly for the sake of improving our knowledge, which will going to help the children recovering faster. Usually, we learn more from our mistakes than from our successes. 1982, my first posting in Kodakal Hills in Pannekade, I seen in OP, one-year-old child, three days fever, no convulsions, no breathlessness, sleeping during examination. I just finished my DCH. I'm a pediatrician. So what I knew, knew at the time was if the child has got breathing difficulty, it is pneumonia. The child got convulsion, it is meningitis. That's not my understanding. The child did not have anything. So I just prescribed a penicillin tablet, paracetamol syrup, and then treated as OP. The child came eight hours later in a gasping stage. It was really, I was cursing me what I learned during my course, all this course. I studied in good institution. I didn't know how, I'm not even able to identify a child who is going to die in another eight hours. Yeah. That was really me. Because in 1982, we did not have a structured assessment. In 1992, Pauls was available in India, introduced this concept of assessing the physiological status assessment. All along, we are only looking for a disease like pneumonia and meningitis. Pauls introduced that, that is not a right way of managing emergency. We had to look at the physiological status. That is what I changed the approach towards emergency. That's what I am going to highlight during this talk. For every hospital, OP is very busy. Government, public sector, private sector. For every, you know, in average, every 100 patient, OP, 5 will be required hospitalization. One may be requiring an ICU care. So, you look at this circle. There's a red circle is somewhere here. We have to search and find out. It's very difficult. We need a structured assessment which can identify a sick child in short time, maybe 3 to 5 minutes only. Nobody can take more than 5 minutes in an OP. So, that is what the IAB, ALS private level course, teaches us that how to pick up the sick children from a larger crowd. This is an interesting story, sad story. So it was breaking news in 15 January 2009. In the TV news, flash news is US Airways plane crashed in Hudson River near Manhattan. See how crowded city. 15 January 2009. It was the captain is Sully. He's an experienced pilot. After just taking off, the plane was hit by birds. So all the four engines failed. So he no other way except to Crash land, the city is very crowded. So the only place left for him is Hudson River, big river. Out of, he landed in the Hudson River, a lot of controversy surrounding that. There were 155 passengers and crew, all of them survived with minor injuries. How, how it is possible? Because mainly they had a very structured emergency preparedness. Everybody came. It, the story is the rescue team came within four to five minutes. They had all the structured arrangements to manage a catastrophic emergency. So the lesson learned by us is every emergency, if we are prepared enough to manage the emergency, we can come out successfully. This is a case scenario first. This is a five-year-old boy received his MMR and varicella. He is asked to wait in the hospital for 30 minutes. After 15 minutes, developed itching, periodical edema, cough and breathing difficulty. He had tachycardia, stridor was observable, sudden onset. Tachycardia, strider, arterial rashes, falling saturation. So, provisional diagnosis of anaphylactic shock. So, he received oxygen by mask, adrenaline 0.2 ml intramuscular, normal cell normal bonus was started, monitors attached. This is the situation. See here, eyes are congested, lip edema, periorbital edema. So, does it mean that with every child, 
developing skin rashes following some vaccines or some drug he need adrenaline. No, not. When it exceeds one system, it goes beyond the skin. It's just an anti-carry alarm, nobody will give adrenaline, but it goes beyond the skin. Child develops coarse voice, strider, wheezing, pulmonary edema, or circulatory, pulse becomes weak, tachycardia, hypotension, then definitely adrenaline has got a big role. But all this can develop within 2-3 minutes. So once we see some rashes in a particular situation, we have to stay with the child, continuously monitor the child, because rapidly the child may deteriorate. So you might ask whether it is just uh, anaphylaxis, just a painting attack. These are all the differences. Painting attack occurs immediately, but anaphylaxis happens about 5 to 30 minutes. In anaphylaxis, it will be erythema, articaria, swollen eyes, and lips. But in painting, it will be pale, sweaty, cold, clammy skin. Here, there is weak central pulses, tachycardia, hypotension. All these features suggest that we are managing a child with anaphylaxis. So how to manage? First step is intramuscular adrenaline is the first drug. First and best drug is intramuscular adrenaline. 0 0.0, 1 ml per kg of IM on the lateral aspect of thigh. Can I give subcutaneous? No. Subcutaneous will not get absorbed because it's only useful in asthma, but it's not useful in anaphylaxis. Can I give IB? No. In an emergency situation, when you give IB, a lot of errors can happen that can lead to fatal arrhythmia. So, intramuscular, that too, only in the lateral aspect of the thigh. So, how to give? Preferably, you give uh, because... We have also made a lot of mistakes, but only from our mistakes we learn. Always take 1 ml or 2 ml syringe for because you have to correctly calculate the adrenaline dosage. And the needle, what you use, it should not be a needle like this. 1.25 cm is used for subcutaneous. You have to take a longer needle, 2.5 cm, long, normal IM needle. Then only it will reach the muscle. Otherwise, your adrenaline may not be effective. This is a very life-threatening situation. Dose is 0.1 ml per kg is easy for a person working in an institution. For a practitioner, it may be difficult to remember a lot of things. This is a simple table. Maximum dose is 0.5 ml, that is beyond 10 years. For a preschool child, six, sorry, school child, 6 to 11 is 0.25 ml, it becomes half and half. In 2 to 4 year preschool child, 0.20 ml, less than 2 years, 0 0.6, 0 0.06 ml. This is the adrenaline dosage. So first is adrenaline, then comes other intervention. Child has to keep lie down, call for help, recommend positioning, high flow oxygen, you have to start two IV line because another few minutes child may develop shock where you may not be getting an IV line. Nebulis salbutamol and nebulis adrenaline, continuous monitoring, Thirdly, and only the antihistamine comes. Usually, generally, we are all taught to give antihistamine and decatron or hydrocortisone for any allergy. There is only a third lane management. Last rescue. Suppose we are unable to manage everything, ventilation, everything fails, probably rescue therapy is not available. At this point, I just want to remind everybody that after receiving a vaccine, child should wait in the, wait in the clinic or OP for 30 minutes because if they develop a serious anaphylaxis, we can, there is a window of opportunity for us to manage successfully. So, which is best? Adrenaline or antihistamine or a steroid or a stew blocker? No. Only the hero can save the life. Adrenaline. Adrenaline is a hero for a long time because the oldest drug, cheapest drug, but that is the best drug. Without adrenaline, even ICU cannot be opened. So, adrenaline is the best drug for anaphylaxis IM, particularly in the vastus vast media, it's lateral side of thigh. From here, move on to the next one. This child was brought to ICGR on a Friday afternoon. History was, child was given DPT on Wednesday evening. So anything given free of cost, naturally blame will put on it. So admission diagnosis, DPT encephalopathy. Usually our young postgraduates, they're very curious. They're very sincere. They looked at the child and one of the PG brought me this uh, attention. Can you can you able to identify this? What is pointed here on the arm? There are bruises. There are bruises. When you see bruises or ecchymosis in a child with convulsion, it indirectly indicates the child has got an intracranial bleed. The PG was right. So we did the CT scan. CT showed intracranial hemorrhage. Uh, so child had bruise of the left arm, paler, bulging, anterior fontanel. There is intracranial bleed in the CT. PT was prolonged. CBC showed normal platelets, low hemoglobin. So we were managing a child with de delayed hemorrhage or newborn. Improved after vitamin K, FOP, and ventilation. So it is very curious. Very meticulous clinical examination only saved the child. Otherwise, we would not order for CT for a DPT inquiry. Nobody will order the CT scan. So that is a lesson learned from this. Is a good clinical examination will bring out very important things. This all of you probably looking at a child. We can understand this is a child village kid returning from the school after sunset. She was passing through a paddy field. She had a thorn prick like feeling while crossing the paddy field. When she is brought to the hospital after a few hours because of double vision and swallowing difficulty. Looking at the face, face gives a diagnosis. And history also gives a diagnosis. There is drooping of the eyelids, drooping of the jaw. These two, in the background of a paddy field, thorn prick, 
gives a clear diagnosis that even though there was no history of nobody saw the snake, but it is it is very strongly suggests that we are dealing with a neuropolitic manifestation of snake bites. So all victims of snake bite, even if they appear to be asymptomatic, it is safer to admit them in the hospital for 24 hours because the all envenomation features will develop over a few hours, not immediately. So this child, this is a, a video belonging to a different child, just to show the clinical sign and brought it here. If you look at a child, this baby has got a very shallow breathing. When, he, when I was a weighing person, I asked me, a teacher, how to say shallow breathing? He said, across five beds, if you look at the baby, you can count the respiration. You can see the respiration, count the respiratory rate. If you are unable to see the respiration properly, you have to go closer and closer to see whether the child is really breathing or not. That is shallow respiration. That's what you are seeing here. You have to go very close and close to see whether really it is breathing or not. That is shallow breathing. So shallow breathing, snake bite, two puncture marks, snake bites, fang mark. This suggests that the child got a neuroparotic manifestations. So there are three groups, cobra, viper, and the crate. Crate, generally, local changes will not be much. They won't be even very fine fang mark will be there. It is comparable to the insulin needle of 30 size needle. So fang mark may not be very much visible. There is no local cellulite. The child will have only abdominal pain, neuroparotic manifestation. Unless we very closely monitor the child, we will miss the child snake, but there is no history. If a child... Suddenly, village child suddenly develop abdominal pain and develop ptosis or drooping of the uh, mouth, a neuroparotic manifestation that is clearly in fear of great bite. It is will respond very well to ASV. The child successfully resuscitated, child survived. See, after giving ASV, you see, see the response drooping of the eyelid that has disappeared. Drooping on the mouth, that also disappeared. The child is recovered from the snake bite. Serious neuropolitic envenomation.